guys, in this video we are looking at Pretty Fly for a White Guy by The Offspring. If you're looking for a power chord study, this is a great song for that. Um, I use this quite a bit with my students. Uh, great for just moving the power chord shape around rapidly. Uh, cool little power chord riffs. Um, you know, lots of work on trying to maneuver your fingers without making too much noise, not over gripping, uh, managing transitions, learning root notes on strings five and six. We'll talk a little bit about that. Um, yeah, just a just a good, uh, not introduction, I wouldn't say, but um, a nice little challenge for getting that left hand moving around with that power chord shape, which as we know is a very commonly used chord shape. So the majority of the action is in the chorus. We've got a lot of movement there. Uh, the verse is pretty simple and straightforward. We'll talk a little bit about timing and rhythm. And then, of course, you have the main riff, uh, the intro, um, which we will start with now. But first, let's go through our chords. So one thing I'll note is I am using uh, two-finger, two-string power chords here. I am not using three-string just to enable more mobility. All right, so um, we'll just go through the chords based on each section and then we'll go through each section in more detail. So our power chord shape of course is going to be with fingers one and three. Some people like to use their pinky, totally fine. Um, you know, whatever works for you there. But we're going to be on strings five and four and six and five for pretty much the entire tune. Um, so the main riff and the intro starting on B5, so strings five and four here, fret two and four. That's B5, and then we just jump up to string six and five. That's F sharp five. And then we slide up to A5, that's at five and seven. And then we have another B5 right here on frets seven and nine, so that if weren't aware that you could find these chords in different places, you have B5 right there on strings 6 and 5, and then you also have B5 right there on strings 5 and 4. Okay, and then you just jump to strings 5 and 4 here, and you get E5, and go back down two frets to D5. So, a nice little pattern like a rectangular pattern to follow here on the uh, guitar neck um, with the intro. E5, F sharp 5, A5, B5, B5, E5, and D5. Um, that'd be a good thing to do right there, just kind of eliminate any sense of rhythm from the song and just, you know, move, practice moving that uh, left hand around. Um, when we jump into the verse, the I think it's the first and second verses are just going to be strings one and two at fret seven uh, with a little bar with finger one. And it's going to be playing that real short. So that's basically a uh, it's basically a B five chord as well. Um, just a different kind of sound for a power chord than what we're used to, but same same notes there. And uh, for the chorus, we're going to have that B5 back in string six and five, uh, fret seven and nine. And we're also going to be using that A5 again. We're going to be using E5 on strings five and four, fret seven and nine, and D5. And then the little kind of thing that slides back and forth is F5. F sharp 5. That's probably going to feel like one of the more difficult parts of the tune. F, F sharp 5. Or F5, F, F sharp 5. And then the chorus does jump up here to uh, frets 10 and 12. G5. D5. That's another D5 right there. D5. D5. And A5. We have um, two E fives. We have two D fives. And we have two B fives. And we also 
we have two F sharp fives. Right there. Right there. So like I said, it's covering a lot of territory on the neck, um, which makes it a great candidate for learning uh, root notes of chords or just locations of notes of, of um, locations of notes on strings six and five, which is always going to be important. Um, so let's go to the intro. So we've got uh, B5. Now I'm going to give that one more strum and jump to F sharp five. to A5, then to B5, two strums, and then one more, jump over to E5, and then D5, so B, B, F sharp, A, B, 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 D, hopefully you can hear me over the buzz. tell my students to practice at home is um, to just glide over the strings don't ever or don't even uh, press the strings down initially so you can practice maneuvering and just maintaining that shape in the hand right and transitioning crossing strings or moving on the same set of strings with as much relaxation as possible right um, and then also practicing stopping because I see a lot of people you know, they'll just, they'll just think about moving fast, so then what ends up happening is they go too far because they're just trying to move quick and they're not thinking about how they're moving, right? Um, so, a couple things there. Know exactly where you're going, right? Know those frets. You have to think ahead in music at all times. Get your eyes on those fret numbers. Don't be too close to your guitar, right? You have to kind of have a global view here of the entire neck. So you can just easily, you know, maybe a little neck movement or a little eye movement to get your eyes on uh, whatever fret number you're heading to. And it's just like, you know, think about like throwing a baseball. When you, when you throw a, a baseball to somebody, you're going to be looking at them right here, and that's going to make you throw it accurately. Um, if your eyes go off to the side, then your arm is going to follow. Um, same thing with anything as far as hand-eye coordination is concerned, right? But... I played baseball, so I use baseball as my go-to analogy. Um, so just think about that. Eyes get in place, and then the hand will follow. If you move that hand before your eyes go, you're going to be just kind of all over the place. Um, so one last time on that intro. It's going to come back several times. slow build up the speed little by little work with the audio just the different at different tempos there um, like I said for the verse when we jump into the verse just going to be strings one and two at the seventh fret there and the count on that both of these are going to be short it's going to be one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three So, since there's not much going on on the guitar, great opportunity to practice counting out loud, do it with a metronome. Uh, I'm, I'm strumming those strings down and immediately using both hands to just make sure that my strings are muted, right? I relax my index finger and I uh, just lightly mute the strings with my right hand, get back in position to play it again. So, very straightforward there. All right, chorus part. This is kind of the beast of it. Um, a lot more going on here, just a ton of movement. All power chords though. Um, so we already went over all those chords, now I'm just gonna play it. Um, 
let's do this in, uh, well, based on what I'm looking at, little pairs here, um, where there's like a theme that keeps coming back. So, see what I mean in a second. Uh, we've got E, F to F sharp, back and forth, again. And then D to A, D. And then E. back and forth between the F and F sharp five uh, in a second here. All down strumming. Um, so when you get to this, I am fixing my thumb and kind of torquing off of a fixed position, right? I'm using friction there to push that, uh, push my uh, fingers one and three in power chord shape up a half step and then be able to just pull it back real quick. Instead of moving the whole hand, that's gonna feel very difficult um, and probably sound a lot more choppy, at least in my experience. I don't know, maybe other, maybe other folks play it differently, but there are going to be times, majority of the time, you're going to want that thumb to be following um, the finger movement, right? Because it's the guide, it's, it's the stability, um, it's doing a lot of things. But when you have these quick little movements uh, inside of a small space, you can kind of fix and use friction, like I said, to generate leverage. Um, so that is something that, see if I can do it this way. Uh, how my thumb is almost moving in the opposite direction but that's just because I'm kind of torquing a little bit it's not really moving though instead of this that's just gonna be a lot more work okay so that's gonna be something to keep in mind as you do that and then another part of um, another part of the tune here in a second that we're going to get to. Okay, so that section again was Then that whole idea starts over again, but the end of it is going to be a little different. So we've got the B, F, F sharp 5. When I go from E to D, I'm most likely going to take my thumb with me there and then back up to E. And then when I go to F5, I can fix my thumb a little bit more. So there's moments inside of a riff where you can decide to uh, use one method versus the other. It just kind of depends on how far you're having to shift. Um, how many times you have to repeat it, uh, how, how fast it's going, you know, tons of variables there. But again, to the exact same riff uh, that we played initially. All right, so that's an exact repeat of uh, the start of the chorus. Then we jump up here to frets 10 and 12, G5. same position then A to E and here's probably 
probably the trickiest part of the entire song. It's going to be B twice. speed it's gonna feel a little herky-jerky so you got to get your uh, hand very comfortable with how you are going to be moving uh, across the strings right very accurate be precise think about where your eyes are um, okay I'm gonna play through the entire chorus uh, two or three times a couple different speeds here we go So take your time with that one. That probably give you a little bit of trouble if you're not familiar with um, moving power chords around that quickly. So, but always remember that you know if you're working on a, a nice challenge for yourself technically or whatever it happens to be, um, there is light at the end of the tunnel. Uh, you're always as you're challenging yourself, you're always going to be growing, even though it feels like. Um, you know, maybe that isn't the case. It is always the case that you're improving if you're challenging yourself. Um, but just think about things, right? Think through it. Don't just trust yourself to move uh, physically in, in, in the correct way that would work best on guitar. You have to think through it um, to manage movement and just build in some strong, positive muscle memory, okay? Uh, last thing is uh, the final verse I think it's the final verse, third verse. Uh, changes up from the little, that little thing. Uh, we're just gonna have B5 and A5 here on strings uh, six and five, fret seven and nine, and five and seven. And it's just gonna be those two chords gonna sound like this. That's basically it over and over until it goes back to uh, I think it goes back to the chorus. Can't remember off the top of my head. Um, but anyways, so that is one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and two and three and four and two and three and four. So there I am moving my thumb because I have a lot of time to rest. I'm not continuously moving. So I'm letting my thumb uh, go with my fingers. I'm keeping it in contact with that neck. I'm not dragging with a lot of friction, um, but I am moving it. Uh, that is everything, guys. So remember, um, you know, I, I recommend using the two finger power chords with a fuzz sound effect. I believe that's what he's using. Um, you know, it's going to be the sound is going to be full, so you don't have to worry about that. And it makes it a lot easier to deal with these uh, maneuverability challenges. Um, think about the things that I said with the thumb and just practicing with no pressure on the string and moving your hand uh, in efficiently a manner as possible. Um, I think that's it. So you can kind of break it down to the easiest riff to the most difficult riff, or you can start most difficult, or you can 
randomize it. Um, have fun with this one, guys. It's a blast to play along with and uh, always fun to use fuzz. See you in the next video. Thanks.